Hi there, this is David from Monster Nation, and I have the privilege of interviewing Lauren Ashley Carter, who has been quite accomplished over the past couple of years. She's been in some very memorable horror movies, um, some great stuff like Jug Face and Premium Rush, The Woman, and Pod. And she's been very gracious to grant us an interview, so I'd like to welcome you all to Miss Lauren Ashley Carter. Hello! All right, so you have had uh, a lot of fun over the past couple of years, <laughs> and I wanted to ask you, like, um, in doing some research about you, I saw that your father seems to be a huge influence on what got yes. you into horror <laughs> movies. Um, so I was wondering, what was the first horror movie you remember watching with him, and what do you think it was about that film and experience that set the stage for your love of horror movies? Uh, the first one that I remember, and I'm sure that there were tons before that, but as a child, I remember Hellraiser. That was the first one. And um, I loved it because I just loved, um, I've always been attracted to the darker side of things. I loved their costumes, the leather, the metal, and the the theatricality of the whole thing. Uh -huh. um, and that was, uh, I, I don't know, in the, the gore too. I love how they, um, you know, how they did Frank and everything. Um, so that movie was one I just watched over and over. And so there were movies like that that I was really drawn to. Puppet Master was another one. I really, um, anything kind of fantastical mm -hmm. was what I first fell in love with. Okay. Got yeah. a huge thing for Clive Barker, huh? <laughs> did you ever uh, read any of his books? Or? I did. I did. Um, yeah. Very, um, very erotic. <laughs> it's a little trashy. Yeah, yeah it's a little <laughs> trashy, but no, I, I read a lot of, uh, a lot of trash as a teenager. I, I can't even read that stuff now, but... So since your dad was so open, um, I was wondering, like, uh, what what about the rest of your family? How did what do they think of your career, not only as a horror actress, but as someone who got exposed to it at such a young age? Well, nobody really knew that I was exposed to it at a young age. I was very smart. I mm -hmm. knew that if I would say anything about this, that I probably wouldn't be able to continue to watch them. So I kept it hidden for a while until I had a kind of nightmare, my first one, and I usually didn't have any nightmares regarding films that I watch, and I still don't. I won't ever have a nightmare from a movie. I'll have nightmares about real life, but um, I had a nightmare that Freddy Krueger had walked into my room, and um, like about the time that he was going to that hurt me or kill me or whatever, uh, I heard a voice and it was like, his mother's voice in my dream that was like asking, like telling him to come downstairs. It was very strange. And I woke up and, um, and it was, it startled me because Freddy Krueger was in my dream. And so I went to my mom's room and I told her that, you know, I said, mom, I just had this dream and Freddy Krueger was in it. And his mom was, yeah. my mom says, wait, what? She goes, how do you know about Freddy Krueger? And kind of the cat was out of the bag at that point. But, um, they, uh, they pretty much let me do watch whatever I wanted to. My mom's always had a taste for darker movies as well, but not horror. It would be drama. You know, I, I told somebody um, all about a year ago, one of her favorite movies is Downloading Nancy. <laughs> and she told me to watch this movie. And it is so messed up in so many ways. And I can't, that's not like, that's even too much for me, that movie. Okay. Um, but yeah, so my, both my mother and father have uh, inclinations to darker things. Uh, and then the rest of my family, they, they like it when I do theater because I usually do comedy. Um, and they, you know, like they couldn't care less that I was the lead in Jug Face and that uh, in The Woman about the critical acclaim that the woman has. All they care about is that I did an episode of Law and Order. Like that's it. That's like they're that's my big crowning achievement. Yeah. yeah well, you know, hey, <laughs> dreams about the big Fred K. You know that I feel like we're uh, you know Razor Sisters. I, uh, it's one of my favorite series. So oh, very awesome. Cool. But I guess along the same lines, what do you think uh, makes for good horror and a good horror movie? Since mm. you've been in so many. Uh, I I love so many different styles of horror. I really um, and and a lot of people that I've met at these conventions, um, they well the first I just went to my first convention as a as a prof as an actor at a horror hound in Cincinnati. Congratulations! Yeah, that was Cincinnati, really cool. Cincinnati, that's like your hometown too. Isn't yeah, Ohio. Well, I'm from northern like Cleveland area, and I know that they do do um, some up there. So I feel like after you know I have a couple more films out there, I can really start going because I really had a great time. It was so much fun, and I'm. I'm such a fan myself. So I, I've, you know, picked up friends along the way that started out as fans of mine, but now we, you know, hang out and talk about movies. And, um, 
Christy Jett is one of my favorite people ever. So if you're listening, Christy, hi. So, hi, um, Christy. <laughs> but Christy is one, and Stacy did a. Uh, I met through through all this as well. That we just love all kinds of horror. I love horror comedies. Uh, Sleepaway Camp trilogy is, you know, I love all of them. I, you know, every single one. I love the Witchboard movies. Like uh-huh. Stacy and I talk about all the time. We're like, oh, Witchboard two, Witchboard two. It's amazing. Um, and then I also, but I also love the the things that are coming out of uh, the foreign film industry. Uh, the Babadook that just uh, from Australia was incredible. Um, French horror, you know, I've been in love with Martyrs and Inside for a while and Korean as well. So for me, it's just that you, as long as you have a, um, uh, you, you have to have specificity in whatever you do. So if it's going to be comedy, horror, or if it's going to be um, uh, gore or uh, invasion or whatever, it's just, it has to be very specific. And, um, and you have to have a love for the genre. If you don't, if you're doing it just to make money to bust out a horror movie because you think it's easy, then it, it comes out in your work and in audiences won't know why they don't like it, but they won't like it. And it's because there's no heart, even though it's horror and, you know, we're killing people and we're doing really gross things. There has to be care involved in it. And so I think as long as I see a movie and there's care in it, that's why I love Hen and Lauder. You know, I, I love uh, Frankenhooker is also one of my favorites because he, it, yeah, because he's really, he takes care yeah. of, of these people and these things. Wow. Okay. All right. So I guess like even moving on into some of the, the technical aspects, like um, when you go to, well, not technical, I guess creative for you, but when you go to create a character and form one and you're, you're hitting, uh, you're getting ready to act, like what do you feel makes the best anatomy for a scene? Like when you're actually mm-hmm. in it, you know, what do you draw upon to kind of bring out uh, your best performance? It's uh, taking the time for yourself is a big one. Um, especially on low budget films, you don't have time. <laughs> Nobody has any time. And so the thing is, is that you have to be aware of everyone else's time as well. And it's hard when you're the one that's on camera. Um, but so to, to take the time at the very beginning is better than, um, finding it later. So I, and I have to tell myself that all the time. I have to say, slow down, you need to take your moment. And, and it doesn't have to be that long, but it's taking the time. And then also, um, as far as the anatomy of a scene goes, I always, you have to think about where you've been. I don't like to focus on where I'm going uh, as far as what I know about the script, not my character. Um, my objective, of course, is always there, but to only think about what just happened, what has led up to this. And that's really important when you're doing things um, that aren't, it's not in continuity, not in a chronological order because you know you'll be doing the ending and the first shot of the day on day one so then you have to have had this dialogue with yourself and just think of the story the whole time and and telling that story and um that's that's usually what I what I try to do is just think what just happened what has what has led up to this point mm-hmm. and don't worry about the end of it especially if you have a death scene or something like this because as much as you know you want those tears or you want um, the the face and everything as long as you concentrate on where you are in that present moment it always comes together at the end if you think about the end then it gets all ugh. Well, speaking of that, um, out of all the film roles that you had, uh, what would you say your most gruesome death was? And was it your favorite? Mm. I Well, luckily, I haven't died too many times. Um, That's going to lead into my next question. <laughs> the ones that you have died in, mm-hmm. you know, what would you say, you know, was the most gruesome way to go? Um, I, I mean... <sighs> So for for me, I've been I've been very lucky mm-hmm. in how I've been killed. So, but I still think and Jug Face the throat slit was spoiler. Sorry, um, okay. uh, Jug Face. <laughs> heard it here yeah, first. <laughs> yes, the throat slitting scene was really hard for me because I used to have nightmares about that all the time, and knives scare the crap out of me. I just really don't like knives. It's right. funny. I mean, like guns, because I'm like, okay, you get shot, you could get you could be okay depending on where it is. Yeah. 
Not it's in the head, pretty, obviously. Yeah, it's pretty over but with pretty knives, quick. there's just too many. You cut things and the blood, and no. So yeah. I was I was testing that knife constantly. <laughs> I was like, I knew, you know, I, did, I was like just thinking Bruce Lee and his son. You know what? And, that's and actually, like, I was going to say that's pretty smart because you know people have had horrible accidents. Mm. I mean, have you ever experienced any kind of like onset accidents where somebody, um, you know, you really cut a bitch? Or oh, yes, I actually just did. Um, there's a project um, that will be. It's um. A friend of mine, uh, Forrest, uh, he he's doing this project. I can't speak about it. It's going to be out soon on Kickstarter on in December. It's like um, it's going to be a very big deal. But I got to do my first fighting uh, stunts. Oh. I learned Filipino martial arts, and I had to uh, do these stunts. Well, um, I've never done stunts before in my life. I'm always the one that's getting. Well, I do. I get thrown around a lot, and I'm great with getting thrown around. I'm a little person. I love to fly and tumble, and <laughs> that's fun for me. I love getting beat up, but I've never beat anybody else up. So um, I, <laughs> I didn't know this, but you know, you don't stop even if you hit somebody. You don't stop unless the stunt person says so. But I've never hit somebody before in my life, and so we were doing this thing, and I. First of all, the first thing I did was I had these foil fingertips and they were really like taped and firm and it sliced his nose open. And it was one of those things that was superficial and it could have been really bad or it was fine. And it was fine. It was fine. (laughs) He did have a flap of skin hanging off his nose that he just ripped off. And then the second time we did another thing, I punched him in the face. Because the, the timing was off a little bit. Um, I'm not going to blame anybody. But no. Uh, and he slid. And we heard, the director, Natasha Kermani, uh, we heard this crack. And I, just <laughs> like, and it was slow motion, too. So my face is like going, oh, no. <laughs> and, and then I hit him again. So it was, yeah. I He was hurt by me um, through the stunt work. But I also... I did a, a show, Oleana, David Mamet's Oleana, and there was a fight scene at the end, and there had been a, a cup that broke on stage, and um, nobody knew about it, and I sliced my foot open. I'm oh, wow. at curtain call. I had no idea bowing, and I thought, ooh, my foot. I must have scraped it. <laughs> I lifted up my pant leg, and I said, I need to go to the hospital. And there was wow. a reviewer there that night, too, and there's blood everywhere. Was, yeah, yeah. Well, you almost got it, right? You almost broke a leg. You cut a foot. It's mm-hmm. kind of in the same vein. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so, yeah, there's always. finally know somebody who did that, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, what's cl- okay? So, uh, so if you if you haven't died that much on screen, I have to say that mm-hmm. then you got the flip side, which is that you get to be the final girl, yeah. which is a you know very popular trope in horror movies. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm sure that you cut from the same vein as Jamie Lee mm-hmm. and Heather Langenkamp and all yeah. those other great heroines. So what is it like to be the hero at the end of a horror movie? Because not many other people are standing with you when you know when the end of the movie comes. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I love it. Um, not even because of the idea of the final girl or being the one, but only because you have more time on set (laughs) and you have more days and more time to act. And, um, you know, so I, I never even really thought of it in that sense. I always was just, you know, thought of the having more time and uh, to play and to have fun. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, I think I think even though when you are the final girl, there's still there's still an ensemble around you. And so it's funny. You don't really feel alone because you're so the crew is such a big presence to me as an actor and and the story that we're telling. Um, So, yeah, I guess it, it doesn't feel very final. No. Okay. Yeah. So if you could on screen, who would you love to like, so there's the expendables. All right. <laughs> if you could like partner up with somebody, mm. another famous final girl to kick some ass with, who would okay. you partner up with and what weapons would you use to take down? Well, I was just <laughs> thinking about who I would love to be in a film with. And this is, I don't, um, unfortunately she wasn't a final girl in um, drag me to hell, but Alison Lohman okay. is one of my favorite people in the world. I love her. Um, I know she's, I think she's taken a little bit of a break now, but I know she'll be back. I just, um, but, uh, okay. So if I could, yeah, I know, (laughs) but I loved her and drag me to hell. She was phenomenal. I've always been a fan of hers, but after that, I was like, she gets it. She really understood. She's not afraid to sacrifice cats. No, (laughs) no. And she, you know, she got, it. it was like a perfect, perfect Sam Raimi movie. It was amazing. Um, weapons of choice. Oh, I, Weapons are always fun. I love that in horror movies, um, the different kinds of things. Um, 
Let's see. Um, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of anything with machinery. I've always loved that, like the you know the fan belts or the grinding wheels and the uh-huh. time, the tick tock tick tock kind uh-huh. of thing. I like those. I also love uh, corkscrews. Those I never get sick of a corkscrew in the eye. That's, That's pretty inventive. I would have yeah. just said you know something I could cap somebody in the head with. But, yeah. I mean, but corkscrews are much more yeah. dramatic. Like yeah, we, the... I, there's so many great corkscrew ones, <laughs> and um, I, still one of my favorites is serial mom the poker and this you know his i don't know if it's his kidney or spleen that's on the end of it and oh, geez. i think you could even use and like the and lamb, sh- right? the oh the yeah the lamb, <laughs> the of lamb as any weapon. yeah killing anyone with meat is is pretty cool <laughs> or if you had like what would be great to me is could you kill someone with like a kid's like a plastic w- wiffle ball bat or something like it would take forever yeah. but if you just like <laughs> kept doing it that could be really gross oh geez so you know since since you've gotten to be um you know kind of like the lead in a lot of these horror movies what was it like um when you read a script and you go out for the part and then when you actually get it like what is that moment uh, or that place you go to as an actress when you're like nailed it <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, for me it's um it's a comedy it goes from it's okay to make another reference to one of my favorite movies death becomes her when um goldie mm-hmm. when goldie hahn sits down in uh, or no, she's standing um, in front of the couch, and uh, Meryl Streep has uh, I think she's got a, a poker as well. They're like fighting with oh no no she's like a broken off handle of a shovel, and she takes the broken off handle of the shovel and she throws it at Goldie Hawn thinking to penetrate her, but it goes through the hole in her stomach, <laughs> and Meryl Streep goes yes oh no shit. It was, that. yeah. <laughs> that's kind of my reaction. Cause that I'm like, an yes. Thing. And then I'm like, Oh no shit. Now I have to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, and I love the work. I love the work, but it's that terror of, 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 um, of expectation and of being what you want it to be, being what you see in your head. I feel like it, it I don't, I, I'm, I'm not a literal artist. I can't paint to save my life or draw, Same here. but I feel like it must be something similar where if as an artist, you have this vision in your head of exactly what you want. I know some artists don't work that way, but if you are and you have this vision of exactly what you want to paint and exactly how it should come out or, um, or a song or anything, and then trying to do that. And of course it's not going to be exactly the same. It'll be a little bit different and varied and that's okay. But that pressure is pretty great and, uh, it's almost, but it makes it exciting and you just have to kind of chip away at it. Okay. Well, very cool. Yeah. Now, I mean, uh, when you were kind of bringing up like, um, death becomes her, Mm -hmm. um, I know that that's not really like horror, but it has, it blends violence with comedy. Um, and I think another movie that you also really like is uh, freeway, which is, uh, uh, the first time I saw that, I mean, I could not believe the things that came out of miss sweet home, Alabama's mouth, (laughs) but I mean, uh, but it was, uh, it was very fun. So I was just kind of wondering, like, um, how do you feel about incorporating humor into something that like these people are having awful things done to them? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you feel when you try to make an audience laugh about that? I, I love it. I think that it's, I think it's necessary because it's real. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, you know, the, one of the things that I love about a lot of Korean horror movies is that there is a lot of humor in it because funny things do happen. And, and I think that also when you, I think that it's it's um it's a treat for the audience. I think it's a present. It's a gift to give them some relief. And I think that there's also something to be said about movies that don't let up and just press you and press you and press you and just put keep that that lid on it uh, the whole time. But I also think that it's such a gift to give people that to say it's almost like saying it's we're we're in this together. You're we're enjoying you. You're enjoying us. And um. And, and I don't think that it takes away from anything. I think that it's very human to have those, those laughs, you know, um, I mean, theater does it all the time. Shakespeare does it all the time. There's always a clown. There's always a moment of that release and it doesn't take away from the tragedy of Uh anything. Um, to me, it makes people, um, it makes you care about them to laugh, makes you makes you care if anybody makes you laugh you know uh, that's why I'm also like I watch all kinds of stand-up comedy and I'm obsessed with it and um and you know and Bill Hicks he would say these very funny things and very dark things and you cared so, All right, yeah. so you've gotten to work with some pretty cool heavyweights. You got to work with, um, you know, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, uh, David uh, Cape. 
and uh, Larry uh, Fessenden, um, all uh, pretty cool people who've uh, accomplished a lot. So, what was it like uh, working with some of them? Um, they were they were all phenomenal. They were all very nice guys. Um, David Kep was so we well you know he was one of the writers on Death Becomes Her, which so I was like and Jurassic Park. Yeah, oh yeah, I I'm mean surprised in you could hold Indiana from Jones and, out. Oh, <laughs> I was geeking out. Yeah, it was right. yeah, and but he was so sweet, and I've never he was so calm and the whole time. Um, you know the AD was running around freaking out, but the AD was amazing. Everybody on there was really phenomenal. He was so calm the whole time. I, I kept trying to. I had a small part in Premium Rush, and I was always in the movie. I'm always very present. So at any point I possibly could, I'd try to get myself facing the camera. And there was a part, and I'm filing papers, and I <laughs> I tried to do a profile. I was trying to figure it out, how it would look natural. And David said, um, Phoebe. That was my character's name. Right. I said, uh-huh. He goes, uh, could you be facing the filing cabinet when you're filing things? And I said, oh, okay. He goes, yeah. Um, but then, uh, later we were doing, he was really sweet. We actually, he had me stay after one time and we just did a bunch of wild lines of me t- talking on the phone and having conversations, none of which were usable because I'm just a foul, crass, ridiculous person. But, um, but he was really sweet and we had a fun time. Um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was very nice. Um, he, he knows Lucky McKee actually. Okay. And so it was right before I was about to do the woman. I had filmed Premium Rush and then went on to film the woman, like I think two weeks after that, maybe. And um, I was looking at the woman script the whole time during Premium Rush because I had a bigger part and yeah. in Premium Rush I didn't have much to say. And uh, Joseph asked, you know, what are you what are you reading? And I told him, oh, it's a star script by Lucky McKee. He goes, I know Lucky. So I texted Lucky and Lucky goes, ah, he's around every single girl that I know. Mm. Uh, but he was really lovely, uh, very professional. He did his own – one of the stunt guys um, that was doing a stunt – for him, had to get hit by a car and roll over the hood of the car. That was the last day I was there, and he ended up getting cut by the windshield and had to go to the hospital. And they didn't get the shot, or they didn't get everything, so Joseph said he wanted to do it the next day, or Joe. or um, So the next day, I wasn't there, but I had seen them on... Uh, uh, on TV or online or something that he had done the stunt and the same thing happened and he cut his arm up the same way and had to get stitches and he's of course keep rolling keep rolling keep rolling um, but yeah everybody on that set was really lovely Asif Monvi was hilarious he was my favorite thing about that shoot he was terrific uh, he's just he's so quick he's so smart and just a gentle, kind person. Tell me a story about Larry, because I actually had oh, a chance to meet Larry. him at Comic Con, oh, and yeah. uh, he's very colorful. So, um, and you've done uh, quite a few movies with him, and uh, you even, uh, I think one didn't one he was. It was you, it was mm-hmm. uh, him, and uh, Miss Sean Young, actually, of Replicant fame yes. from Blade Runner. Yes. So, you've, uh, so what's it like, like just being in a room with such heavyweights? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was, you know, it was, it, what was really great about Larry is that, you know, he's done so many films as everything, a director, a producer, a writer. Um, I'm, I don't know for sure, but I'm sure he's been behind a camera before as well. Um and when he's on another set or whatever he's doing, he really just lets everybody do their thing. You know, he doesn't get in the way. He doesn't try to control anything when he's just an actor on it. Um, and it was really, it was um, a really good thing to watch, you know, to see somebody just come in and, and do their their part. Um, but uh, yeah, Larry is, he's got such an ease about him. And, um, and he's very funny and he keeps things, I mean, the worst thing is he's too funny. We, in between scenes, I mean, he just, he had me in fits. There was one time, I mean, we all, even the director, Chad Kinkle on, uh, Jug Face, we had to take a minute because we just couldn't stop laughing. And every time you just look at his face and he just made these faces and, uh, but he's really a very a sweet person and, um. Um, great to work with. And Sean Young, she your also mom, she right? played my mom yeah. in Jug Face and she's such, she's a mother herself. She has two sons and, um, you know, she's very, uh, she's very nurturing and. Did you ever um, like mm-hmm. ask her to like, uh, do a monologue from Total Recall? <laughs> Did you pretend to be Harrison Ford? Oh and, no, and no. <laughs> but she, you know, what's really cool I about her is she's, yeah, she's great. <laughs> She'll tell stories all day and that's, and everybody loves that. And she's mm-hmm. a great storyteller. And, um, and she'll tell, nothing's off limits with her. Um, and she's just an open book and an open heart. Oh, yeah. Cool, cool. Really nice. Oh, how fun. Oh, geez. Um, okay. So 
since you've done like you know you're I guess you're pretty used to it growing up with it and now acting in them Mm -hmm. so I was wondering is like has there ever been a script or anything that's crashed your path where you're like that's too much this is going (laughs) too far is there anything that even phases you anymore or you know yeah yeah what phases me is when uh like I said when there's not care taken when somebody's just trying to crank something out Mm -hmm. um you know I don't I have no problem with um with violence and nudity and sex and all that um but (laughs) And it's, you know, and it, and there's some things that it, it's not even that it, that it has to, oh, you know, when people are like, well, it's going to have a purpose. There has to be a purpose behind it. It has to, it has to have to be there. But I think some things are there to, to be there. I think that it's fine to have a kill like in the opening of a movie because we want it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that's okay. As long as, like I said, there's a style, there's specificity, there's a reason behind why you're doing it. Is it just to please an audience? That's fine. If it's just to please the audience, but make sure that it's really because you want them to scream. You want them to squirm. You want them to laugh whatever it is, make sure you know what you're trying to get your audience to do. Mm. And there's some scripts where I think I, you're just throwing elements into it. You're throwing great ingredients into a pot, but they don't all go together. <laughs> like you can't throw everything that, you know, that tastes good independently of itself. It, you can get, I, I know this because I've tried to make like veggie smoothies before. I'm terrible at it. I, they taste <laughs> awful and fruit and thing. I don't know how to they do it. They taste terrible when they're not in the <laughs> So, so yeah, so that's what it is. I've had, you know, scripts before and I, if they're, if the characters, if you don't care about them, then I don't care about them. Yeah. So like when you got the woman, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, when you, when you first, um, you know, got in that movie, I mean, it has so many, uh, extreme themes, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, what did, what did you like? Like how, what was your like first reaction getting that, that film? Um, well, you know, what was interesting is that, uh, when I had the script, I was able to talk to Lucky the whole time when I was reading it. So I really, as I was going through it, I was making notes and I was emailing him and we were going back and forth about parts of it. So I had the privilege and the luxury of talking to him through the entire read and then meeting and talking very much in depth about, about where these people were coming from. And, um, and for him, it's very character driven, um, more than anything. It's about really finding out, um, uh, about what's inside all of them, whether it's good or evil, and then what they show, what they choose to show, what they don't show the mask in front of what's happening. And, um, and, you know, the ability to, to evolve, or Uh devolve as it were. Um, so I, because of that, and, and, you know, I've said this before, but it, unfortunately these things happen. What happened in the woman happens. I mean, we saw those girls that were, you know, um, taken and and put into a shack in the back of a house for years and impregnated and and kept like dogs with, with chains on and like, and and neighbors were playing and mowing the lawn and saying hello to this guy. Um, and that's not the first time that this movie happened, not because Lucky's a crazy weirdo, Mm -hmm. but because we see this and when, when, who are these people that do that? what is their life like? They're not, I mean, they're not monsters. They don't have, you know, ghoulish faces and eye patches. They look like everybody else. And I think that, um, that that's really the, that uh, being from Ohio, we've had a lot of that. (laughs) And yeah. yeah. (laughs) And so I, Pennsylvania. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. So I don't, so to me, it's, um, we're showing the horror of reality. So there you have it, part one of our exclusive with Lauren Ashley Carter. Now, uh, to find out more about the conclusion of our interview, be sure to check back, as we will have part two posted very soon. And be sure to subscribe. Thanks a lot, YouTubers.